Hello everyone. So today it's about the post and core. Though it's not a new thing, it's been existing in the clinical practice for more than 250 years. Still, it's an enigma. Due to which the biomechanical failures are one of the common uh, issues. So today in this topic, today in this session, let's highlight the darker side of the post and core and to bring the brighter aspect of it so that to increase the long-term predictable success rate of endodontically treated teeth. So when we look at a natural tooth, a healthy natural tooth with a good structural integrity, here the loads are distributed evenly. The way the vertical loads are being transferred from enamel to the root structure, and the way these vertical loads are converted into the horizontal loads at the DEJ and are equally distributed in the entire tooth is missing in case of endodontically treated teeth. This is because of the caries, cracks, and access cavity preparation, cleaning and shaping. Because of all this, the structural integrity is lost. Now, on top of that, when we are doing the post end core, especially if it is a metal post, which has the modulus of elasticity almost 10 times more than that of the natural dentin. Whenever these loads are present, this stress concentration takes place at the apex. And this leads to the wedging effect. And because of this, the root can fracture. Now, if we are opting for the fiber post, though it has the modulus of elasticity close to that of the natural dentin, Whenever the loads are there, though these loads get evenly distributed along the length of the post, but still being this, this is not a very strong material, it is unable to withstand the highest loads which are present at the cervical margin, which can lead to the breakage or breakdown of the fiber post in the form of either deformation or debonding or even the fracture of the post. So now what is the remedy? Here is one tip. Never expose the head of the post like this. Always cover the head of the post with a core material of at least 0.75 millimeters. Even if you are opting for a full crown also, always make sure that the head of the post uh, and the distance between the head of the post and the a crown prepared surface, occlusal surface, there should be at least 0.75 millimeters, the gap should be there. By doing this, we are avoiding the stress concentration on the head of the post. So this can uh, minimize the catastrophic uh, fractures or damage of the fiber post. Now, what are the other challenges? One is related to the post length. So when we are placing the long post, though it helps in the retention, but at the same time, when we are preparing such a long post space area, unnecessarily we are weakening the root structure. And there are chances of the perforation also. Whereas if you are placing the shorter post, it has a wedging effect, which can lead to fracture of the roots. So now the recent trend is that stick to the materials which have the physical properties close to that of the natural dentin, like that of the fiber post. So when we are using the fiber post, instead of going to actual two third of the, if we are able to get the two third of the root length without much of the wider preparation, it's well and good. But if, if the roots are thin or slender, we don't want to prepare the roots, then it can, we can stick to either half the root length, sometimes even equal length of the feature crown also by using the fiber post, but not with the metal post. Now, the other concept is a no post concept. Here, we don't give the post at all. Now, look at the situation. When you have an embodied cavity, here the fracture resistance is lost by almost 63%. So ideally, this condition is supposedly for the post and core. But if the occlusal loads are minimal to moderate, then we can avoid the post and core in this case, and we can do the biomimetic restorations. So when we use this glass fiber mesh, it absorbs the occlusal forces and it distributes them evenly onto the entire occlusal surface and it prevents the catastrophic fractures. So here is a case where two walls were missing. Now in this case, I did not want to do post and core for three reasons. One is the boy is just 17 year old 
And the second thing is the occlusal loads were minimal to moderate. And the post I did not want to do because the measles said there were three canals were there. So if I prepare in this unnecessarily, I'll be weakening the road structure. And the distal side, if I have to place the post, then I have to do further preparation on the occlusal surface, on, on the crown surface, which I did not want to do it. So we stuck to, uh, we were sticking to the biomimetic restoration here with the help of the glass fiber uh, mesh. And here you can see the six months follow up and here it is a two and a half year follow up. So future, in future, I may opt for indirect partial coverage restoration like an overlay. Now here is another case. This is a 13 year old boy uh, who had to go for a root canal treatment. So being he just 13 year old, I did not want to do the post gen code. Here, this much of the tooth structure was missing. This was the pre-endo buildup which was done. So in this case also, we did a glass fiber mesh, we used it and a direct post endo restoration was done. This is a two years follow up. So now the second molar has erupted. In future, I will be planning the indirect partial coverage restoration. Now the other issue is about the width of the post. How much should be the ideal width? So the thing is that when we use a thicker post, they are less likely to fracture. But at the same time, these thicker posts, they generate more stresses on the roots and even weakening of the root because we are preparing more of the uh, surface, more of the post space also, the diameter wise. So always remember the width should not be greater than one third of the root diameter. So now the modern concept is we don't widen the canals anymore to accommodate a post, but we choose a post as per the canal diameter. So like in this picture, you can see, I have, I have not prepared any, whatever was the root canal treatment when we have done, whatever the diameter was it, I have selected the post. But sometimes that we won't be able to choose the accurate post uh, because the posts are all like, you know, they are circular. So in every anatomy, maybe we won't be able to place these round fiber post without widening the uh, canal space. In such situations, the anatomical posts are useful. So these posts, we can cut them and we can adapt to the shape of the canal and then we can bond them. So we need not do any additional canal post space preparation. Now the other ones are the fiber pin post whose diameter is just 0.45 millimeters. So the multiple glass fiber post, or glass fiber uh, pin post, they can be placed inside the canals and we can go ahead with the bonding. So these are very useful when the canals are either elliptical, ribbon shaped, oval shaped, or even C shaped canal, here you can see. So in this, I have not done any preparation, especially in such canals when we prepare, we are uh, weakening the root in the mesial distal direction. So without that, we have placed the fiber pin post in this case. Even Nyakor is also useful whenever there is excessive damage is there or the damage is going subgingival. Now, when we are discussing about the diameter, the important thing to be remembered here is that the maximum amount of the uh, stresses are in the cervical area of any tooth. So this pericervical dentin is supposed to be preserved. This is very important. So pericervical dentin is the area which is four millimeters above and four millimeters below the alveolar crest area. So when we preserve this, this is the one which acts as a natural ferrule. So it allows the better transfer of the functional loads to the remaining root. So when it is preserved, it, it has got a better fracture resistance. Now, one more thing to be remembered is that the mandibular molars, the mesial roots, they have a danger zone, which is mesiodistally, it is flat in the middle. So whenever we are shaping the canals or the post space preparation time, we should remember that so that we don't create unnecessary strip perforations. And also remember that the middle mesial canal, if it is present in the mesial root, they have low fracture strength in comparison with the mesial root, which has only two canals. And also remember, if the distance between the mesiobuccal and mesiolingual canals is short, then expect that thinner dentin thickness. And also remember that if there is a deep isthmus is present, they are more prone for the vertical root fractures. 
So these root canal characteristics to be remembered whenever there is a need to place the additional post or the second post in the mesial canal of the mandibular molars or the buccal canals of the maxillary molars where we have the curvatures or in case of the premolar where we have the concavities. So these areas, these things have to be in the mind whenever we are doing even the uh, root canal uh, shaping or even the post phase preparation to prevent the mishaps or even to prevent the weakening of the root. Now, the next thing is whether to choose the metal post or a fiber post. So for this, the most important thing is to have a uniform ferrule to decide this. So when we have uh, the uniform 2 mm ferrule is very important. If this is not there, like in this clinical condition, then we should achieve 2 mm of the ferrule by doing either the crown lengthening or an orthodontic extrusion. So among the two, orthodontic extrusion is supposed to be a favorable one. Uh, it, it is more advantageous because in this, we can get a better crown to root ratio in comparison with the crown lengthening. So now finally, the cast post indications are whenever we are unable to achieve the uniform ferrule of the two millimeters, and when this compromised tooth is serving as an abutment in case of the long span bridge, or when this tooth is subjected to excessive occlusal loads, then the cast post can be indicated. But at the same time, among the cast post materials, the better uh, material is the cast gold. Now coming to the texture and shape of the post. So the thing is that the better retention is with the screw post. But at the same time, the screw posts are more likely to cause the root fractures. So now the recent trend is that we uh, stick to more of surface treatment and adhesive uh, principles to achieve the uh, better retention factor. But at the same time, we should remember that uh, inside the root canals, the bonding is compromised. So we have to pay attention to each and every step so that our bonding is more effective. So inside the canals, always make sure that there is no remaining sealer. This has to be cleaned completely. Let it be with the micro brushes, alcohol, air blasting, or sand blast, or uh, ultrasonics. With all this, remove the sealer completely so that we have effective bonding. And in those inaccessible areas, the dual cure bonding agents are better to be used than the light cure bonding agents. Now the preparation of the post is also equally important. So before bonding itself, cut it to the required length with either the diamond bar or with the disc, but not with the carbide burrs, because the carbide burrs, they tend to damage the fibers which are present within the fiber post, and then it becomes weakened. And now even the surface treatment of the fiber post is equally important. So before bonding it, one can do the surface treatment with either 10 or 24% of the hydrogen peroxide, sodium ethoxide, hydrofluoric acid, or sandblasting. All these can are the methods to increase the surface roughness for effective bonding of the fiber post. Now for bonding, even the resin carrying tips are equally important. They should be able to reach to the bottom of the post space area. So for this, either the ones which are supplied with the material or even the other ones which are available where you mix and load inside these tubes and then deliver it to the uh, deepest portion. And apart from this, now the light curing. Here, the most important thing is that since we are using the dual cure materials, here, don't start curing this immediately. Wait for a while, wait for the initial setting to take place maybe for 30 seconds to one minute. I wait at least two to three minutes. I wait for the initial setting to take place. So I take advantage of the dual cure property inside inaccessible areas. Then I start it with a curing, with a light curing. This is very important point. Now, lastly, always cap the head of the post with a layer of either if you're going for a full coverage crown, we can use the same dual cure core material. Whereas if you're leaving it as a long-term direct restoration, then cap it with a light cure composite resin. So now coming to the last one, where when we have the less remaining width of the tooth, 
So in such cases, uh, even the other wise option is to go for an uh, endocrine or overlay combination instead of doing the post end core and by doing the crown preparation, weakening the tooth structure further. So instead of that, we can opt for overlay and endocrine combination. This works on the compression tone concept. Now, one more important thing to be remembered is in case of the posterior teeth, the fiber posts are predominantly for adhesive purpose because here the loads on the posterior teeth are the compressive loads. So that can be with uh, like uh, even when we do a direct restoration because we have a bigger and wider pulp chamber area in case of the posteriors. So when we do the restoration in the entire pulp chamber, even that can withstand the compressive loads. So here they are more of the adhesive purpose. And for these reasons, many times in case of the posteriors, we can actually avoid the post end core. Whereas in case of the anterior teeth, they are not only for the retention, but they are even for the functional factor that is for the resistance also. Because unlike the posteriors here, they are more of the shear loads, which are much more dangerous. So when we place a fiber post with that monoblock effect, we increase the rigidity also of the tooth structure. So in anterior, they are more indicated. Now, my take home message for this session is always do the pretreatment evaluation before uh, choosing like, you know, what post endodontic treatment to be done, whether this tooth is for a root canal treatment or not, what will be the functional long-term uh, success of this tooth. For that always do the pretreatment evaluation and then planning and while doing even a root canal shaping or even while doing the post space preparation always minimize the tissue sacrifice and always preserve the pericervical dentin and a ferrule of at least two millimeters is critical to prevent the loss of the post or fracture of the tooth use post and core materials with physical properties which are much closer to that of the natural dentin and adhesive procedures at both coronal and radicular levels for increased retention and the resistance. While metal posts are more stronger, but fiber posts generally do not cause the catastrophic fractures. Consider biomimetic restorations whenever it's appropriate. Thank you for your patience here.